Welcome into this week's McPherson College Coaches Show as we go through everything that's happening in McPherson College Athletics, the Bulldogs here in the fall sports season. I am Jim Joyner. This very handsome man to my left is Mr. Steve Sell. Steve, another exciting week. We were home again for football, and it felt like with so much going on that at some point we would have a week where things are a little bit down. There aren't as many things going on, and we have finally hit that week. Yeah, and I think uh, you know the, the kids have been here what, six weeks probably now, seven weeks. Uh, they're probably ready for a little downtime. No soccer. You're uh, not, though. No, 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 of course not. Uh, no soccer this week, and I think both coaches will tell you uh, they could really use the week. They got both teams got some players that need to get healthy. Uh, they're getting players clear. I think they've got all the players cleared now. Uh, I think the highlight of last week was volleyball. Uh, went up to Benedictine, knocked off the number seven team in the country in Grandview, Iowa. And uh, Coach Cahill will tell you, that could be a real turnaround of the season. That could be a defining moment where this team really starts to take off because uh, volleyball and both soccer teams, they now get in to uh, KCAC play. They're done with the non-cons, and, and they get to play the teams uh, – uh, in the conference that they're familiar with, and we'll see how they do. It sort of sounds like Steve was saying non-convicts, but no, just non-conference. We're getting into the conference schedule here. No no convicts. I hope not. All right, Steve, let's dive into our coaches' show, starting with McPherson College football coach Jeremiah Fiscus. Joining us on our coaches' show this evening is McPherson College football coach Jeremiah Fiscus, following a loss on Saturday in the home opener against Sterling, 29-19, dropping the Bulldogs' record 0-2 and 0-1 in KCAC play. Coach Fiscus, what are some of the things that you thought your team improved on from week one to week two? You get your first game on the road in a weird environment down in Wichita, then you get up here with a home game in week two. I'm sure you saw some improvements. What are some of those things that you saw? Oh, you know, I think we, in terms of offensive output, we, you know, moved the ball a little bit better after we settled into what we needed to do. Um, all of the special teams, except for the, the botched uh, two-point two point swinging gate play, improved, you know. Um, you know, I, I think it's the same thing as the week before. I mean, the effort was, the effort was great. The execution was, was not quite where it needed to be at times. Sterling, obviously, a very good football team. I thought one difference was they got a lot of seniors that are in their skill positions, and this is one of the most explosive offenses, but you held them without a touchdown in the second half. What adjustments did you make at halftime after giving up three scores in the first half? Oh, you know, I mean, the defensive coaches did a great job of adjusting to what they needed to and um, showing a couple of different looks, and the kids just settled in. I mean, you know, Sterling's kind of one of those offenses they are a little bit they're a little bit different, some of the formations and motions and things of that nature that they'll give you. And the kids settled in and fought hard. And, you know, we've got to really do our part offensively and execute and quit giving up 14 points. We've got to find a way to get started a little faster and get out of the damn first quarter without, you know, without being in the hole. Well, I think that with your defense, the thing that has been impressive is the way you've been able to play in the second half. And then in both games, you have not given up a second half touchdown, which I think is pretty remarkable for this team early on in the year. What do you think it's been about this defense that has allowed you to be successful early on? Well, you know, typically, typically you see everybody's best plan in the first 10 to 12 plays, you know. Um, they're going to throw at you what they game planned. And then after that, they're going to settle into doing what they do. So right at first, they'll do some things to discombobulate you. And after playing for two quarters, the kids get a chance to settle down. And the other part of that is now, um, you know, poor offensive output right at the start. You know, you three and out a couple of times. That makes it tough on a defense to, to settle in. You know, once you start, if you look at our defensive production, um, once we started moving the ball after that, you know, the third series was a longer drive. It was like, I can't remember how many plays. It was, it was you know, like 13 plays or something like that. Um, once once we settle in, that gives the whole team a little bit of confidence that, okay, this isn't, you know, um, it gives the defense a chance to sit over there and adjust some things, and it gives the, you know, just gives the team some confidence. Okay, now we're moving the football, we're back on track, we're on schedule. After a slow start, Ed uh, Crouch really settled in. I thought he really ran the ball terrific. 147 yards on 17 carries, nearly 200 yards passing, and Ben Nickel continues to, you know, show why he may be a first-team all-conference receiver. Uh, he was over 10 catches, 124 yards, two scores. Those two guys have really developed a nice chemistry. Well, the, the thing about Ben is Ben 
does it right all the time. And when I say that, I mean, he tries to do things the way that we coach him to do at all times. He doesn't do his own thing, and that's what, you know, Ed has confidence in Ben because he knows Ben's going to show up. Um, there's a lot of guys with ability, and they've, you know, really, it's just the, the fact that Ben is going to do what Ed knows in a clutch. Ben's going to, he can count on Ben to go do what he needs to do, and Ben is very coachable in that aspect. And he's a very heads-up football player. He understands situational football. He understands you know, why we're really trying to do things. He's not out just out there running routes. And then, you know, Ed, Ed's, Ed's working to be more disciplined and, and Coach Anderson's doing a fantastic job with him and, and Ed's doing a good job of taking the coaching. You know, he's, Ed's a guy that's, you know, um, you know, like last week, you know, you get, we get scout kickoff team. Ed's out there running on scout kickoff team. He's a senior, <laughs> he's a senior quarterback running on scout kickoff team. When it's kickoff return team, he's out there as a scout kickoff returner. I mean, that's not something we asked him to do. That's barely something we allowed him to do. And he's adamant that I'm going to do my part all the time to help, to help win. And there's a lot of guys like that. But it's, it's rare that you see. You know, it's easy, to be in that, it's easy to be in that spotlighted position when you're the quarterback. Defensively, I thought you had several guys perform well. But Patrick Caleb really stepped up with a big game. Yeah. I mean, you know, Pat is a guy that, you know, he's going to play fast and physical. He cares about this team. He's been around here for – he's in his fourth year as a senior. And um, – you know, he really he quietly goes to work every day and, and competes hard. On the other side, maybe I'm just so used to watching the defensive backs for the Chiefs not be very good, but I w have been very impressed with your defensive backs so far this year. Brett Sykes made a really big interception late in the game for you guys last week. He made some big plays all of last year. You throw in Brandon Wright. You throw in Jeremiah Hawkins on the other corner. Bailey Sykes at safety. Your secondary, I think, has been very good in terms of covering the pass game so far. Would that be your same evaluation? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, first it's, you know, um, Coach Knight's doing a great job coaching those kids. You know, we, we made that change, uh, had a coaching staff change a couple of weeks before the season, and, and Coach Knight moved back to the secondary, and we hired, you know, hired a different linebackers coach. And, He's doing a good job coaching those guys, but they're doing a good job of buying in. And, you know, it's all, it all kind of goes with it. And when I say that, I mean, when you have the effort and the good attitude that we have, the coaching will take hold, you know. When they're playing with a fanatical effort, you know, and they're still bought into what we're doing, the coaching will take hold. Bethel coming up this week uh, uh, before the season. I was one of the people that said I think they got a chance to maybe surprise some people because they run an offense that you just don't see. And, uh, of course, they opened the season with a victory over Bethany. But the game that really caught everybody's eyes is what they did to Avila uh, last week. Uh, really put it on Avila, scored 54 points, won 54-34. But what challenges does a, this Bethel football team present? Well, you know, this, this – this week is about discipline. Um, when you're playing the triple option, it is about staying disciplined, reading your keys on defense. That's one of the most challenging things that they're going to have to do uh, in terms of playing defense over the season. Because the minute a guy doesn't do his job and tries to do somebody else's, it's a four, it's you know it's a 40 yard touchdown. It doesn't matter. You know it's you got to tackle the dive, you got to tackle the quarterback, you got to cover the pitch, and if you don't do your job, they they will gash you. Um, you know, thankfully, we, you know, we had to play at the last college I worked at. We play, Actually, the last two places I worked at, we played triple option teams every, every year. So there's just – there's at least some, you know, we had some success against it, and, and, and that's just in the way you prepare the whole week, not just how do you play defense or how do you play offense, but just the whole game week preparation. So at least we've got a way to, you know, look at it and kind of get them ready for it and, and things of that nature. But they're going to have to go out and they're going to have to play – you know, that, that kind of offense, those kids will hit you in the teeth if you let them. And if you're not disciplined and you try to make up for that, you know, so you got to play very physical, you got to play very disciplined, and you got to be ready to attack as well. And they've really gotten confident in running that offense. Zach Esau from Heston uh, does a real good job at quarterback. And then they got a number of different running backs uh, that they use. In fact, uh, Probably with all sorts of letters and numbers that are in front of them, <laughs> H-back, Z-back, yeah. S-back. yeah. Well, you know, those guys do a good job. They really do know what they're doing. Um, the head coach was a very successful coach in Wichita before he got that job two years ago, and he got that job for a reason. And he knows that offense. The guy, the, you know, the, the guy that's the offensive coordinator over there knows that offense as well. Um, and they have resources. You know, they go. I know they go meet with Harding University, and, and the guy there is kind of the granddaddy of that offense. And 
Um, they do a good job with it. They know they really know what they're looking. You know, they know what they want to do, and they know how to attack you, and they know what, but you know, they know how to adjust. So the best defense for you guys is to have a ball control, consistent offense, though, and, and put points on the board. Yes, yeah, so we've got to score, and we cannot three and out. You know, that's, if you want to go, you can, you can one or two play drive it like we did the other night and get yeah. a big play, but but you can't just turn the ball over, and you can't you can't just you know can't three and out it. You got to give your defense time to set over there and adjust and, and things of that nature, and and you got to be you know. Um, efficient on offense. Bethel's coach at KCAC Media Day said that he named his child Trip in yeah. terms of triple option. What do you think is a name you could come up with for your next kid to throw in there and name him after? Could you name him Bulldog? Yeah, I, you know, if we if we have another one, it'll just have to be a name that starts just with an dog. L. It'll have to be a name that starts with an L. The two little girls, Lennox and Lake, and we'll we'll stick with the L theme. But yeah, it's I mean the guy, you know. They they know what they're doing with the offense and they're a believer in it and they're all in. You know that's that's one of those things where, you know, if you're trying to do that offense, you really can't be half pregnant. You got to be all in. Maybe you can name him Shotgun. There you go. <laughs> Just, you know, we're going to go straight shotgun offense all the time, or you'll go spread, and we'll say we're going to name him Spread. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know I don't know if the wife will be okay with that. Yeah. But you have my approval. Well, I pre I think I'd get vetoed on that. <laughs> well, Coach Fiscus, best of luck this week. Appreciate you, gentlemen. Have a good day. Thank you. Joining us now on our coaches show is a man from the men's soccer team here at McPherson College, and that is Navid Istanbulu, the second time that I've been able to introduce you and nail the name perfectly, am I correct? Yeah, 100%. Now, Navid is from Germany, and so obviously we have to talk about that a lot before we can dive into some soccer. We talked about your route here, and the thing that I found interesting earlier this summer when we were talking is you said that you went through an agency to find a way to be placed at a school or at least find a connection, find a coach. Walk me through that process of going through the agency and finding your way here to the States. So um, first of all, you have to <clears throat> um, send like a letter to an agency and ask them if they want to like take you into their agency because um, many people in Germany want to do that, but most most uh, people that play soccer don't really have the, like, the abilities or the quality to do it. So they have to decide to work with you as well. After they decided to work with you, um, you have to like, t um, you basically just take videos of your playing, um, videos of your training, and um, they upload it onto an intern website and like many coaches from the US that are working with that agency can go onto their website and like try to pick a player that they want to pick and then um, you have to go through a lot of like paperwork as well and if you pass all this paperwork um, you're able to come to the United States. Now in Germany they don't really have high school teams per se do they? Isn't it more like academies or things like that or am I mistaken because um, here you know you, you've been watching you watch McPherson High play and do they have like leagues or is it or is it just like club soccer how is it over there? So um, High school or college and sports are completely separated. Um, you go to high school and after that you can uh, do whatever you want, um, but that's like not, and there's not any connection to high school. So yeah, it's uh, club soccer, it's academy soccer, um, same with any other sports as well. And um, yeah, like there's no connection between high school and, and sports. Another thing I wanted to ask you is, you brought it up when we were talking earlier this summer and said, yeah, there's a lot of differences culturally for me, but even soccer for me, it's different from here compared to Germany. What are some of the differences exclusively on the soccer field that are different from American soccer and the style that's played here compared to a European style? So obviously we, we start with the lines on the, on the turf, like the football lines, we don't have mm -hmm. these in Germany. Um, also, just like the way we think about soccer, it's just different. It's like in none of like it's not better in Germany. It's not better in the U.S. It's just different. Um, there, are like many many teams here, like to play big balls. For example, uh, in Germany, uh, we try to like build build from the back. So they're just like small things. That's different. Well, I know that like with the Spanish team for such a long time, they were just so demanded on passing and passing and lulling you to sleep and then all of a sudden finding a way to score a goal. Is that more the style that you see there compared to here? Yeah, kind of. Like, our boys are not as good as in Spain. Um, but like, uh, it's, yeah, like we try to like adapt to the style. First impressions when, you know, you, you, you grow up in Germany, you come to the United States, you have no idea where McPherson, Kansas is. What was your first impressions when you rolled in the town and just saw what McPherson was like? Um, I was surprised. Um, it was really like, it was all looking so nice and the 
um, I walked around campus and like the, um, the the green grass everywhere. Like it was really nice. And then I went to the stadium and it was just like like I was just blown because the the stadium was so big and the grass the grass pitch looks really good as well. Um, I was just like positively like the the first uh, impression I had was just positive. Best American food here. What's your favorite place to go for American food? Mm, Chipotle. Oh, <laughs> that's good stuff. I'm a big Chipotle fan. Now, Steve, hey. I don't know if that's quite up his alley. I, see, I'm an Italian guy. I, li I like the like Olive Garden or, or the Just Italian place here. Anything with pasta or lasagna. But uh, talk about your team this year. You're you're off to a 2-3 and three start. You haven't started conference play. You do that. In fact, you, you have some time off before your conference opener on the 24th. Talk about your team this year, two and three, but you've played some really tough teams. You guys play among the toughest preseason schedules in the KCAC, but uh, do you feel like the season should be better, worse? How do you feel about the season so far? Um, I feel like we, we played some, yeah, some really good opponents and we showed really good, um, we showed really good results. Um, um, we played really well. Um, the, the games that we lost, like one of them was against Concordia in overtime. Um, it could have like gone in both directions, like either they scored the goal or we scored the goal. So we played really good in that match against Midland. Um, we had a bad start into the first and into the second half. We conceded three goals really early into each of the halves. Um, and if like we, 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 but besides that, we play really well. Um, we have a young team, but we also have like a really talented team, so I'm looking forward to the season. I think we have big things ahead of us. Let me ask you this. You play some games on the turf, some games on the uh, grass at the kennel. Which field do you prefer to play on? Um, so it depends on the opponent. If we play against good opponents, I would prefer to play on the turf because it's easier to defend since the field is a little bit smaller. If we play against teams where we're comfortable to have a good result of it, uh, I, I like to play on the grass pitch because we have more space and it's easy to attack. So it always depends on the opponent. I've asked Coach Quint this a couple of times, and I see him over there standing in the background. What's the identity of this year's team? And he said, well, I don't quite know yet. In your mind, what do you think is the identity of this team? And are you a defensive, physical team? Are you a finesse team that wants to go out and score? How would you describe this team? Mm. <clears throat> I think it's the work ethic. Is, I think it's the work ethic and, like, just like the uh, team spirit as well. It's, both of them are really good this year. Academically, what are you studying and what are you hoping to uh, do uh, in your future career after McPherson College? Um, I'm, um, st uh, I'm studying business administration and I'm doing a minor in communication as well. Um, I'm trying to do my masters in either Germany or Denmark after I'm done here. Um, so after that, I don't really know. You don't want to stick around here? Um, Communications, I'm, you can come work with Steve and I at the radio station. <laughs> I think yeah, we, I think we retired I, here for long. I think, so. we, I think we need a German afternoon hour. There you go. I, I, think you, I think we could find a spot for you. <laughs> well, thank you for the job offer. Um, but I think it's really hard to get a green card. So, <laughs> um, yeah, if there's any way you could get me a green card, I, w I would think about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to leave that up to our owners. I bet they can get that done. <laughs> David, we're glad to have you on today. You were a great substitute. I'm sure Justice is really missing being here. Yeah, I hope you guys well soon again. We're now joined on our McPherson College Coaches Show by Bulldog men's soccer coach Doug Quint following a tough week for his Bulldog team with two one-goal losses, losing on Wednesday of last week in overtime against Concordia, then losing 3-2 against Midland on Saturday. I was talking with Navid Istanbulu before you got over here, and he was on our coaches show, and I said, those are the types of weeks that make you hate soccer sometimes because you lose in these gut-wrenching games where you thought you played well enough to win but just don't find a way. Is that kind of the way it feels after a week like that? Yeah, uh, Wednesday we really we were really disappointed in the result, the final result. Um, we felt we played well enough to win, uh, or at least get a draw out of it. Uh, the positive thing is nobody scored uh, that many goals on Concordia. They've only conceded one goal all season, and so for us to put up two and two really nice goals and, and uh, were, was great to see. Um, and then on Saturday, uh, we're, we were. S so banged up um, we had 12 guys that were either out sick injured or not cleared yet from uh, the NAI so we got pretty deep into our depth chart and it was nice to see some of the younger guys step up and compete uh, as well as they did but you'd rather have that now than when you get into conference play uh, like you said a uh, bunch of guys out 
and maybe maybe it was just a good thing that you don't play this week. That's right. You're, you're going to be able to get some guys healthy, maybe get some guys cleared. Uh, you'd like to see your actual team that you envisioned at the start of the year on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we took uh, Sunday off. We took Monday off. We're taking today pretty light. Uh, nothing with the ball. Um, yesterday, my f the final player that we needed cleared from the NAI got cleared, and so he'll be on the field. And so we're real excited to add our big uh, six foot four, uh, twenty two year old German center back to the back line. Uh, well, you like those so, big guys. I, yes. I, I still go back to Tyler Tank, still one of the most uh, impressive players ever to play at McPherson. Maybe the best player, along with uh, Armando, I mm -hmm. believe it was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, those two guys. I mean, they were just a different cut. It seemed like above a lot of players in the KCAC at that time. Yeah, and Tyler's gone on to do a lot of good things down in Texas and, and uh, from work-related, finished his master's at Texas A&M International School of Business. And, uh, yeah, fantastic player. You certainly, when you see those guys, you wish you could hand them a jersey when they come back <laughs> to the game. So we saw about five or six of them came out to our uh, games out in Texas, and it would have been nice to give them a jersey and let them play. Looking back at Saturday's game, I was reading Steve's story, and a quote must have come from Jeremy at the MacBulldogs.com website, talking about some of your frustrations in that game with giving up two goals early on and then giving one up out of the shoot to start the second half. But it sounds like other than two slip-ups or three slip-ups, that you guys really played a pretty solid game, even with some guys injured or sick or not eligible. Well, we had a really solid first half for sure. For sure. Um, but the first two... You know, you, you you come out of the gate like we did, and we had two just bonehead mistakes. We go down 2-0, 11 minutes into our uh, into the first half, and then fought so hard to get back in the game. We equalized right before halftime. We come into halftime, we're feeling really good about things. We made a few adjustments, and come out and give up a goal a minute and 11 into the second half, and that was the game winner. And the way we gave that up was really frustrating. Um, and so after that, to be honest, uh, it really depleted us, and uh, we weren't, um, we didn't have uh, another sniff at their goal. Defensively, they locked it down and really, really kept us at bay. Who were some of the guys that stood out on your side this week that either played well or, or found a way to keep you guys in some games? I know Justice Kohler had a really good game on Wednesday. I don't, I don't know if he scored on Saturday as well, but who were some of the guys that played well for you guys this week? Justice Kohler was uh, tremendous on Wednesday night and scored one of the best goals I've seen scored here uh, at McPherson. Uh, he was fantastic. And all around Wednesday night, we had a lot of guys play very, very well. Um, it, it just Carlos Reyna was, again, very good in the, in the wide areas. Navid was really good to keep us locked down in the back. Um, and then on, on Saturday, um, I really felt was very impressed with Marcus Brasley, who we called up from the reserve match, uh, from the reserve team. And he's gotten a little bit minutes here and there and got called up and scores a goal in his first three minutes on the field. Um, he's just a big six foot three, six foot four forward, great in the air, and he served a ball in, and he got in on the end of it and scored a nice goal. And so that was nice to see, and hopefully he can continue to get our guidance and continue to grow as a player, and he's going to earn minutes. Something you're still sorting out is your goal situation. you got several guys that can play there. Where are you at on that heading into conference play? Um, we're still waiting for that one player to separate themselves. Um, and it's just not good enough. And we're, we know that. They know that. We continue to preach that. Uh, we're having multiple goalkeeping sessions. And every day somebody's better than – there's a different player better than somebody. They're all three very good. We just need that one player to step up and separate themselves. And – um, give that sense of leadership and, and confidence that we're lacking in the back back there because our save percentage, some of the best keepers to ever play here, uh, Blake Jett, Michael Davis, um, Arthur Lamparder, those guys had save percentages at 80 percentile. And right now I think our best keeper save percentage-wise is 60 percent. And that's just not good enough at the college level. And so we're really – they're all very good and they all have the ability – now it's a matter of which one's going to step up and take the position. Conference play uh, will be starting. Uh, what have you seen from the conference? Obviously, Oklahoma Wesleyan, very good. Uh, who else is kind of – is there a team that's kind of surprised you, though, that playing maybe better than you expected them to play? Bethel. 
Bethel College uh, um, has turned. They've really. Uh, James Cottage was at Southwest Christian University and was hired there, and he's doing a very good job. And they they they're they're good. They're talented. They're young, um, and so they're. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with when you get in a conference play. They've played national ranked Benedictine to a 2 1 overtime loss. Um, and so they've been pretty impressive uh, for sure. And Friends University still has a uh, Nathan has uh, st stepped down. Mm -hmm. And they've got a new coach, uh, but they've got quite a guy, bit of guys back, and they're playing very well right now. I think they lost their first game, and they've rolled off four or five wins straight. Well, you've got some time off and a little more than a week, so enjoy it, rest up, and then get yourself ready for the grind. Yeah, got to get healthy. Thank there you. you. Go. Thank you, you. Continuing on our McPherson College Coaches Show this evening, we're joined by volleyball coach Corey Cahill after a very exciting weekend for the Bulldog volleyball team. They come up with a sweep on the road in Atchison. They first win 3-1 over Benedictine and then take on the number seven team in the country, the Grandview Vikings, and win that one with a sweep 3-0. Talk about how important this weekend was for your team to go get two wins against two pretty good opponents. Yeah, so it was a great weekend for us. Um, we went in knowing it was going to be a tough weekend, knowing that we were going to play two pretty good opponents, and we prepared all week for them. Um, we did everything we were supposed to do in the gym, uh, got better in all the areas that we felt we were weak, went in with a game plan, and, and really the girls just executed the game plan to a T. Um, I told them going into the weekend, if we can execute this game plan, we will win. Um, they trusted me fully. Uh, they did their jobs, and, and the end result was exactly what we got. One player who had a really breakout weekend, and I think this is a chance, really, this is a kind of a, maybe a season-turning, defining moment, but getting back, Alicia Hall, uh, you know, she uh, really stepped up. In fact, uh, she played so well, the KCAC honored her as Attacker of the Week. Uh, what did she do different this weekend that she hadn't done earlier in the season? You know, so Alicia has has had her ups and downs this season, and, and it's definitely, I think, on the upswing. Um, you know, just the weekend prior, I didn't travel her. Uh, she didn't make the travel roster. Um, you know, I kind of lit a fire under her and told her, you know, we need more. And she said, all right, coach, I'm going to give you more. Mm -hmm. um, and she did exactly that. She she proved me wrong, and, and she took her spot, and she's going to hold it. Um, she hasn't played that good of volleyball probably in her career, maybe in her life, um, and not just – in the matches this weekend, but in the past week and a half. Um, you know, we made the decision not to travel her Thursday night before the Saturday we played at Hastings. And that Friday she came out with some fire in practice and had probably the best practice of her life. Um, going into the, this past Monday, same thing, Monday through Friday, she just absolutely balled out. Um, and just, she, like I said, she's taken advantage, she's taken control, and, and she's now doing what we need her to do. This wrapped up the preseason. Uh, how would you assess... Uh, these matches. You were very busy. Seven and six in the preseason. You head into conference play. Uh, just kind of your overall thoughts of the preseason. It was tough. I mean, we played some really quality opponents. Uh, we did some really great things. Um, had a couple bumps along the way, but I think we learned a lot. Um, you know, we've made some adjustments as a coaching staff uh, to our offense, to our defense, figuring out what's going to work for us as a group with our personnel. Um, and I think a lot of those things have become really successful. You know, we've moved uh, Sydney Burton from the middle to the right side, and that's working really well. We've, you know, now Alicia Hall into the uh, other right side position is working really well. Bree Wallace is now, uh, you know, passing outside. Um, so there's some things that we hadn't done to this point in just this past week and a half where some of these changes have really kind of taken over. We've sped up our offense considerably. We've made some adjustments um, in that regard, and, and they've really worked. Um, we're just getting better and better and, and getting more and more consistent as the, as the weeks go by. I'm sure there are some people kind of like me that are watching or listening to this and thinking when you're talking about putting together a scouting report for volleyball, I know how it works in football. I know how it works in basketball. I think I know how they work in a lot of things. But walk me through a volleyball scouting report. Is it more of the tendencies that another opponent has and where they serve? Is it tendencies on their hitters and where you anticipate they'll be? Walk me through what goes into a volleyball scouting report. Yeah, I mean, you kind of nailed it on the head. So watching, you know, watching film, trying to see their most recent film, seeing where they're starting in rotations, um, trying to get matchups for our hitters, um, trying to get matchups against their defense. You know, where are, where are our strengths and how can we play that against their weaknesses? Uh, 
uh, those types of things. Um, you know, for example, going into the Grandview match, um, you know, scouting them, I noticed a lot of their swings um, from their outside attackers were down the line. And so we rotated our defense, um, put our middle back on the line, moved our setter up, and their outsides were basically neutralized the entire match, which were their big scorers. I mean, just two games prior, one of their outsides put up 35 kills, and I don't think she even hit the double digits against us. Um, so it was one of those things where regardless of scouting report, regardless of game plan, no matter how good or bad it is, it's all dependent upon the players. And so I can't give enough credit to my girls that they just did a phenomenal job of executing exactly what we, what we wanted to execute. I mentioned earlier you're getting ready to start conference play. Uh, I run the KCAC standings on midkansasonline.com every Monday. And uh, I noticed this week nobody's really stepped up to be like a dominant team like McPherson was last year. You look at all the records in non-conference, a lot of teams hovering around 500, a little better, a little under. Uh, what teams right now uh, do you feel like are going to be the top contenders? I think Ottawa, Ottawa is doing uh, a pretty good job. Um, they've played a pretty tough schedule. Haven't really come out with any big wins, um, but they've done some pretty good jobs and, and competed with some teams. Um, played a couple common opponents as well. Um, so, I mean, they're doing a good job, and I think that they're going to be a tough team to beat. Uh, St. Mary, Kansas, um, they've done a pretty good job this year. Haven't played, you know, a super tough schedule, but they've just done a good, solid job. Again, they played a common opponent that we've played as well, um, and they had a similar result. So I think that they're going to be a competitive team. Um, and obviously Bethany. I mean, like I said, Bethany came into our gym and, and took it from us. So, you know, they're, they're going to be a team that I think um, is going to be one to beat in conference, and I think they're much improved. Um, and I'm hoping that if we can step up to the challenge, we'll be right there in the mix. This goes off of the subject of KCAC teams a little bit, but I was scrolling through some sort of social media, and I have a friend that covers high school sports in the state of Missouri. And I recently saw that they are petitioning to potentially have five set high school volleyball in the state of Missouri. Are there any other high schools or states that play high or five set? Because I know Colorado, Kansas is always three. Colorado does five sets. Um, there's quite a few. It's it's moving to that direct, you know, general direction. Is that a good thing um, for volleyball in terms of your side, or does it really not matter? Yeah, I think. I mean, I I don't know if it necessarily matters or not, but it, I mean, it's not a bad thing just getting these girls conditioned to go five sets. Um, it's definitely a change for high school athletes to go from a three set match and not only having to win two sets than to having to finish out a third set um, mentally it's just a difference but I mean if you recruit the right kids it's not that shouldn't matter too much. Well as we look ahead to what you guys having up, have coming up this week or will it be next week? This week. It's Wednesday, this week. I'm all tomorrow. confused because soccer doesn't have anything going on this week. At Bethel coming up tonight which would be when we're airing this on Wednesday at Bethel tonight and then against Tabor next Wednesday what do you know about the Threshers and that matchup coming up on the road yeah they're they're a much improved team I just got done you know putting together the scouting report um, they're they're much improved uh, they're doing a pretty good job they come come away with a couple wins this year that I think were would have been um, harder for them to get last year so I think they're an improved uh, and definitely an improved squad um, we just got to go in and play our game um, you know from start to finish, if we can serve and pass well, if we can keep our, our offense in system, I think that we're going to do a good job. Um, you know, I think that we have definitely a good shot of, of taking it to them. It's just a matter of you know, how we show up with jerseys on. We talked about some rowdy environments a couple weeks ago after the Bethany match. I have seen some videos from down at Bethel that they have had some big crowds. They have been doing the skull chant where clapping over your head. I think you might get a rowdy atmosphere tonight in North Newton. And it'll be fun for you guys to be able to play you know, on the opposite side of that where all the fans are against them yeah. instead of the opposite side when you're here at home. Yeah, I think it'll be good for them. Um, you know, like I said, that, that Bethany match at home, I think it, it shook them a bit. But now, you know, the butterflies are gone. Now it, we've been there. We've done that. We've seen it. Um, so I think that we're uh, in a much more prepared state than we were at that time. So, uh, you know, big crowd, no crowd. I think that we'll be fine moving forward. I think that we're a much different squad in a lot of ways just from a week and a half ago. So. Well, and you're used to being on the road because I think you've only played one home match. So it's not like – Going on the road is going to be that big a difference for you guys. Yeah, exactly. Well, Coach Cahill, best of luck tonight down in North Newton. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. We're joined now on our coaches show by another student athlete. We like to have at least two on during our program, and we're talking with Alicia Hall from the women's volleyball team. And 
Alicia, you had one heck of a week, and yeah. we found out yesterday <laughs> that you were the attacker of the week in the KCAC. Yeah. How exciting was that for you to win an award like that? Yeah, um, I, I was crazy. I did not, you know, I played my heart out this week, and I tried what I, you know, put, played for the team together, so it was cool to, you know, see the hard work pay off. And, you know, when in the middle of practice, Corey's like, Alicia, you're attacker of the week. And he was like, yeah. And then my team's like, attacker of the week, attacker of the week. <laughs> and so it was cool to, you know. They'll just start calling you ATW. I you know? really am. <laughs> That's your new name. Exactly, so. yeah. So it was cool, though. It was definitely fun to play, like, especially Grandview. It was definitely a fun game. Well, Alicia, you're from Aurora, Colorado. Tell us a little bit about your journey to get here to McPherson College. I know you were at Trinidad State before that. Yeah. Walk us through the journey of Alicia Hall. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I played at Gateway High School. I had some help from my uh, coach. She was a setter at Gonzaga, so which was cool. So then she, you know, kind of helped me with the recruiting process to get to Trinidad. And then the, she had... At Trinidad, it was just mainly sophomores, and they were everybody was leaving. So I was like, "Ooh, it's a fresh roster." Like I was like, "I'm gonna contact her. I'm gonna go out there and you know try out." And I was just like, "Gonna be you know a starting setter, right side." Actually, I wasn't signed up to be a hitter. I signed to be a setter at first, and then she was like, "Hey, I'm gonna make you a hitter. So you're gonna be a six rotation person." I was like, "I've never hit in my life." <laughs> so it was cool to go there, and then I came here and became you know a primary hitter. So it was definitely cool, but. Um, Recruiting process, um, Maggie Hands, before she left here, she re reached out to my coach and was just like, hey, we like Alicia. Like, we want her to come try out. And I was like, whoa. I was like, you know, I was all new to this, especially going from JUCO to a four-year. So it was definitely cool to be, you know, recognized from junior college from a four-year. So that was exciting to come out. And then I love practicing with the team. Like, the entire environment just brought me here in, in general. So um, Getting back to high school, what size of high school did you play at? Was it, was it like a big class high school, a small, uh, small high school? Uh, yeah, I played at a 5A, so I graduated with like 500 students. Okay. So that was, yeah, it was fun. It, was, it wasn't really mainly around volleyball. I mean, we had the support there, but everybody was so excited for the football team and basketball team there. But, I mean, we did what we could out there. We were playing really good girls so <laughs> what's the transition been like from last year to this year now you're starting to get more time uh, what's that process been like um, yeah I think everybody you know we had a fresh start everybody could go out there and they weren't afraid to go balls to the wall which is fun so I felt like you know if I had my opportunity I'm gonna shoot and go with it and you know it's been in my favor that I could go out there and prove myself compared to last year so it's just like it's just a fresh clean slate like nobody was really worried about like oh, we have set positions already or anything. So it's just like fresh, new, everybody do what they can and just go play hard. What, what, what flipped the switch from your play earlier in the season this weekend when you were just like, you were the dominant player in the, in, in the <laughs> matches? What, what was it about this week uh, that inspired you to play so well? Um, you know, I talked to Corey. We had talks. Like, he was telling me, like, you know, like, you need to just go out there and play, which really pushed me. So then I went out there, and I was just like, I'm going to play for my team. Like, you know, I was just like, I'm so – I overthink everything out on the court. I was like – I kept asking. I'm like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? And they're like, just go play, kid. And I was like, okay. So then I go out there and play. And it was just like I stopped thinking. I turned off – you know, I turned off that, that I have to do everything right. And then – just started blowing balls up. So there you go. <laughs> now I'm assuming that you drive from the Denver area to here, yes. correct? What's your favorite part about driving on I-70 in Western Ooh, Kansas? You know, <laughs> seeing the cows on the side of the road sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there, there's really nothing to look at. Yeah, it, it's at a spot it's, that you like to it's stop. It's a desolate at. trip. It is <laughs> yeah. a desolate trip. Um, I mean, usually we go, we, you know, we always stop in Wakini because it's such a funny name. We're like, yeah, let's stop in Wakini and get like McDonald's and gas, and you know, because it'll take us the rest of the way here. So. Hayes. We go through Hayes. What but, about Russell? That's a fun place yeah. to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think yeah. it's a great time, and I think yeah. you should soak it in a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I travel with one of my my teammates, Tab, because she's from. Denver, so at least I have somebody to come out here and we're singing and laughing the entire way, so it makes it so much quicker than it needs to be. So. Now, I know in Colorado, I don't know if there are any NAI schools, but I, I know it's it's not common if there is one that may be in a Southwestern Conference or, right. or, or anything like that. 
Did you know much about McPherson, or did you know much about this size of school before you came here? Um, no, I did not hear about it at all. So, like, when my coach reached out, I started doing some research, and I was like, oh, another small school, great. <laughs> but then we came out here, and com coming from Trinidad to McPherson, it, you know, it's a little bit bigger. We have more food choices, which is nice, and, like, just more stuff to do in general. So that was definitely fun, and I was like... And when I came here with my mom, and I saw like a Walgreens, like an Applebee's, and I said, I'm sold. I was like, that's all I need. I was like, I don't need to go to a big town where I could spend more money. So that's I was like, true. this is perfect. What are you so. studying in, in school, and what are your future plans after you graduate? Yeah, so I'm a sociology major, emphasis in health and human service, and I'm definitely looking to go into social work counseling. i got to decide what field exactly, because once, you know, I go to graduate school, I have to, you know, focus on just one subject. So I'm still finding my way with those two. Do you have an idea of where you want to go for grad school? Oh my gosh, I... I we'll, we'll worry about that after Yeah, I'm like, oh season. my god, oh, everything's just coming so quick. I didn't, you know, like, it's like, everybody's like, it's your senior year, and I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. It's just, it's coming so quick, really. <laughs> well, Alicia, congrats on a great week and being named Attacker of the Week. Thank ATW. You. Yeah, ATW. You <laughs> yeah. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> We continue on our coaches show here. McPherson College women's soccer coach Mark Olson following a couple of losses last week, losing 3-2 in the crosstown rivalry against Central Christian and then a 6-0 loss to Hastings on Sunday. We kind of joked about that Sunday game against Hastings maybe being a chance to catch a worn-out team with Hastings coming in after playing earlier in the week, and it sounds like they weren't really worn out after firing 29 shots. But from the box score and from looking at it, it was 1-0 at the half, and you guys sounded like you worked really hard to keep it at a 1-0 game and showed great effort early on. No, definitely. That first half, we played played phenomenal. Um, did everything that – the girls did everything that we asked them to do. They stuck with the game plan. And then just came down to that second half where they were subbing seven, eight, nine players at a time. And wow. how was subbing one or two. And, yeah. we have, and we have to point out, Hastings came in. They're ranked number nine in the country. And uh, they pretty much did the same thing uh, to Central what they did to you. So uh, they're a team that can really put the uh, ball in the goal. Uh, I think they had six goals Saturday and then six goals on Sunday. Yeah, no, they're definitely a phenomenal team. That'll be the best team we played. We'll play all year. Um, but it's good that our players were able to see that. Uh, even more encouraging, we played with them for that first half and just got completely run down. We're dealing with some issues of uh, some health issues that luckily we have about a week from today um, that we can take care of all those issues and they'll be ready to go next week. Now that you've, you've wrapped up non-conference play, what was your assessment? Uh, what was the best part about uh, your team during the non-conference and what are the things you need to work on? Uh, the, best, the best part of, about it, I mean, even though it didn't end, you know, we ended the our last game with a 6-0 loss. The progress, the progression. Um, depending on what we were working on at the time, they applied them to the games. So I'm very excited about that. They apply what we uh, what we do as far as what we talk about and game plan, and they're applying that uh, to the game. And I'm very excited about that. And, and moving forward, I'm. I'm ready for I'm ready for conference games. Speaking of the conference, uh, who are the teams that have kind of maybe separated themselves, or is it just pretty much a pack of teams right now? It, it's a pack of teams. On any given day, um, a team can win, can lose. You know, I pointed out to our team, you know, Ottawa, I was who's traditionally say. at the top. I think they went 0 and 5 in the non-conference. 0 and 6. 0 and yeah, 6. Right. Kansas Westland, same thing. I mean, so. These preseason games, they're great to gain experience from, but they mean absolutely nothing once we start conference play, and that's what we're focusing in on. What are some of the things that you're focusing on for these conference games and in the back half of the season? What are some things that you want to see this team improve on over the next few weeks? Our finishing, we have to improve on that. Uh, we're, we're doing the hard work by creating the creating the opportunities to score those goals, and we just have to put them in the back of the net. Um, our defense is playing solid. We have a young defense. We, we start three sophomores. No, two sophomores, one junior and a freshman. And they played phenomenal. They've done everything that we could ask for. In fact, they've exceeded the expectations. Where does this team stand compared to where it was at this time a year ago? I know the record would have been the same, but 
How do you see the evolution of this team from last year to this year? It's nice when players are coming into our office that started last year and they're not getting the same amount of minutes as they did last year. And they're coming in and they're excited because they're making the statements, we're so much better this year uh, than we were last year, which they've had to adjust their roles with that. Um, and they've done a phenomenal job with that. So compared to last year's team, this year, much more technical, more fit, and the fact that we don't have injuries this year has really helped us. What is this next week going to look like in, in terms of just this week with no game, not preparing for one, but getting ready for the grind of playing an entire conference schedule? What will you guys be doing this week? Is it a lot of sitting around and not doing much and just trying to get healthy, or, or, or what's the plan? Well, yesterday we took, well, we took yesterday off. Um, we didn't practice this morning. We'll do quite a bit of film work this afternoon. And then starting into tomorrow, we'll start adding, probably tomorrow will be our most contact day. Um, and then we'll start getting into pattern play um, and just working the ball, working the ball up the field to figure out how we want to play against Tabor, kind of game plan for them. And what do you expect from Tabor? What kind of season have they had so far? They, they work hard. Um, they're a team that has the talent to to put some goals in the back of the net. They have one player, uh, I believe her name's Dakota. She, a couple years ago, was an all-conference player for them, um, and she's back for them this year. Uh, and their coach was very excited for that. Um, but they're, I mean, a traditional KCAC team. They work hard, and on any given day, if we don't bring it, then it's gonna be a rough one for us. But I expect this group to show up next Tuesday and be ready to go. Coach Olson and the Bulldogs, like he mentioned, next Tuesday at Tabor, and then they will be at Southwestern the following Saturday, the 28th. Best of luck as you guys get the conference season underway. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Coach. We will now be wrapping up our McPherson College Coaches Show to maybe the most important part of the McPherson no. College Athletic Department. That is Sports Information Director Jeremy Nelson. Without Jeremy, there would be no rosters, there would be no game information, there would be no schedules, there would be no stats. And that's why we think you're very important, Jeremy. You well, might not think you are, but you are important. I appreciate that. I, I'm just one uh, one small piece of a, a Cog large, and a big machine. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I don't know. I think you're a, a big piece in that machine. But there have been a lot of things going on with Bulldog Athletics over these first couple of weeks. And I know that you have a chance to follow everything closely because you are writing recaps. You are posting pictures up at MacBulldogs.com. What have been some of the highlights for you throughout the first couple of weeks of the fall sports season? Uh, doing, doing this coaches show has been, you know, is a new thing, and so that's been fun um, to have that. To hey, see thanks. The, yeah, and it's your brainchild, and, and uh, I really appreciate you putting that on my plate and adding more to uh, my already <laughs> busy schedule. But, no, it's, it's been really cool each week to, to have the coaches in here and to talk about their seasons and, and getting a different perspective. I thought the, the Langston game, the Heartland Classic, as, as stressful as that was to pull it all off, and um, it was, it was a, a great experience playing down at Cessna and being up in the big press box, although there was no air conditioning. The big and warm press right. box. But it was, it was a cool atmosphere. and Just not a cool press no, box. No, uh, but it was a fun, a fun evening. And so that's been, um, that's been a, a cool experience. The other thing is just this is the first time I've gone through the preseason here. You know, I got hired last year in late September. And so um, going through um, the, uh, you know, the preseason process with uh, the Bulldogs has been, uh, it's been different. It's been interesting. Um, I've enjoyed it. Um, so that's those are probably been the highlights of the of the fall. And now we're getting into the conference portion of the schedule, and it's probably a little more fun uh, to do uh, stat and do things with the conference teams because you know all these SIDs and you get to see them and work with them. Uh, you're familiar with them. It's a little different. You never know when you're playing these non-conference teams about the SIDs at these other schools, and sometimes you can't get the information you want or stats that you want, but the thing is, you've dealt, developed a really nice camaraderie among your sports information directors. I saw you guys all together down at Wichita during KCAC Football Media Day, and, and you were able to meet and things like that. So, obviously, starting 
the conference portion, the schedule for the other sports, uh, has got to be more uh, exciting for you. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. The, the non-conference, I mean, and being here at McPherson, a little bit different uh, than when, you know, being over at Central in that, you know, we're, we're not playing a lot of the small Bible, Bible colleges. And so generally working with the other SIDs, at least in the, in the IA, you are, are fairly good. But you, you never know. Like you said, you never know what you're going to get. But with the KCAC SIDs, uh, it's probably one of the highlights of, of, uh, of being over here is just working with them on a, on a weekly basis. We got together for the fall fling and, and, and statted all those volleyball games. And um, they're, they're all great to work with, easy to get along with. Um, I, can, I can pick up the phone if I need something. And David Tolley down at, at KW will, will uh, I'm, I'm sure he's probably blocking my calls at this point. But, um, you know, or Sarah at Bethany, Josh at, at Bethel. Um, Caden came on, on uh, Saturday for a football game and helped me uh, do stats because statting football was something I had never done until right. last year. So um, they're all just so willing to, to help. And so, uh, like you said, getting into the conference season, getting to work with them on a weekly basis, um, you know, it's, it's really a, it is a highlight. Now, there's also an opportunity for some students to help you. I know you have uh, – Quincy, I know, helps you. Do you have any other kids that help? And well, you got kids that shoot photos too. Yeah, yeah. Micah Gilbert uh, does a fantastic wow, job. he's good. He's really good. He's and it, it's what he wants to do. He wants to be a professional photographer. And Christy Becker. Christy right. Becker uh, helps in helps when he's not available. Um, I have Trey Flint. He's a sophomore from Idaho that uh, that helps me with stats. Tommy Simmons also helps me. She'll help me a lot more with basketball. Um, she'll be she's a junior this year. Uh, also helps with the the soccer team, women's soccer team. Um, we have. Grant Barrett, who uh, who's graduating at this at semester, uh, he wants to be an athletic director someday, and so we're we're plugging him in in the athletic department. He's doing a variety of things. We've got two interns, um, Desmond uh, Desmond Grayson and Grayson and Colin Parks, who are sport management kids, and they uh, they've been helping out game day operations. We're I, trying I, to get a lot more. Involved. I think it's fantastic when the kids. This is like you say. This is something like Grant Barrett. He wants to be an athletic director, or uh, Micah wants to be a professional photographer. What great experience, because when I was in junior college, I was the assistant sports information director, and I actually probably did more than the sports. He just started sloughing stuff off <laughs> on me. But it is, it's, it's a great hands-on experience. Yeah, and that's what I hope to do more of in the, in the, in the next couple of years is getting more students involved in, our, in my department specifically. You know, Quincy's helping me do some writing. He likes to do that. And trying to find out what they're, what they're good at, what their strengths are, what they're passionate about, and then using them in, in our department. So it's been, it's been very good so far. Well, Jeremy, you're the best. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to be behind the mic this time. Well, we, we really need everybody to know how great of a job you do. <laughs> Finally, on a scale of 1 to 10, tell these people how hard it is to stat football. It's, uh, for me, um, you know, it's, a, it's probably a 9. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, it's, the penalties are what get you. Yeah. You know, when they have a downfield penalty or whatever, and you got to try to plug in yardage. And yeah, I, my favorite to stat is baseball. I love statting baseball, That's softball nice and games. Slow. Uh, yeah, because I can have a conversation. If you were there, I could have a conversation with you, and then go. Sorry, I'm going to plug that in, and then you know, and then <laughs> get back to the conversation. Strike. Right. Yeah. So, uh, um, but f on the scale of one to ten, football and and, so and uh, volleyball are probably a nine for yeah. me. There you go. They're tough. So. Well, thanks, Jeremy. Appreciate it guys. That will now wrap up our McPherson College Coaches Show here for week number three. Steve, we're getting into the groove. We're starting to figure it out. I think you, we're all feeling very comfortable now. And I really like having the student athletes on. They, yeah. they, they really uh, offer. I heard you picking up a couple of German tips from Navid. Well, yeah. Um, you know, who knows? You know, I'm being a, 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 an Italian guy, you know, I, I got I to gotta know the European lingo over there. That's all I know in, in German is Sprechen Sie Deutsch. It's pretty good. Yeah. But what about uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger? You know him? Uh, great uh, German soccer player. I have no That's idea. That's all I got. I have no idea. But, no, we had a great week. Uh, always great to get the perspective of the coaches. Got uh, a big weekend coming up with football. I think uh, the, the game down at Bethel on Saturday – uh, this could be a game. That will be the ESPN3 game as well. Right, and for us, that's not really great. It means Jim and Steve don't work. And it also means that we're going to have about a four-hour game because they take about eight-minute timeouts, it seems like. But uh, the Bulldogs, I think, have a great shot at getting that first win. I know Bethel's undefeated. They've been the surprise team of the KCAC, but Coach Fiscus, you know, his guys have been so close uh, both weeks, have really played hard, and they're going to get rewarded one of these weeks. A big thanks to all of our coaches as well as our student athletes for joining us here tonight. And, of course, Sports Information Director Jeremy Nelson for staying on top of it. What a great interview, Steve. He was, he was phenomenal. Fantastic. Oh, yeah.
For Steve Sell, I'm Jim Joyner. Thanks for listening to the McPherson College Coaches Show.